Okay, so in this video, we are going to do an example of a Riemann sum problem. We are going to do a Riemann sum that is a left Riemann sum, a right Riemann sum, and a midpoint Riemann sum. So this process when we're doing all three tends to take a little while, and I'm going to do my best to explain all of the steps. So just know that if you're doing this on your own, it might not take as long as it's taking me to walk through all the steps, but I really just wanna make sure you're seeing what we're doing and why. Okay, so let's say we wanna estimate the area between the curve f of x equals x cubed plus one and the x-axis from x equals negative one to x equals five. And we're gonna use L3, R6, and M2. Just remember that that subscript, the three, the six, and the two, that just represents how many rectangles we're using. Okay, so all of these Riemann sums are going to be on the interval from negative one to five. So I like to start with just writing out my interval and then putting in the numbers. So negative one, zero, one, two, three, four, and five. So I'm just making a number line using my specific interval. Okay, so let's start with the left Riemann sum with three rectangles. So we use n equals three, that is our number of rectangles. And then our delta x is the width of each rectangle. And we do b minus a, so 5 minus negative 1, divided by 3, where 3 is the number of rectangles. So just remember, delta x is b minus a over n. Simplifying this, I'm getting 6 over 3, which is 2. So the width of each of our rectangles is going to be 2. And we have three of these. This is something you might just be able to tell by looking at the interval we've drawn. So if I need to fit three rectangles from negative one to five, they're each going to need to have a width of two in order for them to have equal widths. So I'm going to call x zero my first value, my negative one, and then I'm going to just count up. So I have x one, it goes at one, I go over by two, then I go over two more, that's my x two, and then I go over two more and that's my x three. So these are just sort of the endpoints of each of my rectangles. This just helps me see what it might look like on the graph. Okay, so now I'm going to set up my Riemann sum. So we're doing a left sum here. So this means we're using the left endpoint on each rectangle. So I'm going to use x0, x1, and x2 as my points since those are on the left side. The formula for the left Riemann sum is the sum from i equals 0 to n minus 1 of f of x sub i times delta x. So I'm just taking that from the definition, and now I'm going to fill in my information that's specific for this problem. So I'm starting at i equals zero and going up to two, and I'm using f of x sub i, we'll fill those in in a moment, and then I'm multiplying by the delta x, which is two. Now, if this works and I've written this the correct way that I just explained, we should be using the leftmost points. So as I go from i equals zero, I plug zero in, I'm getting f of x sub zero times two, then I do i equals one, and then I do i equals two. So this is looking like I expected. We're using x0, x1, and x2 as my points. So now I'm gonna use the function that we were given at the beginning of the problem for f to find the value of f at each of these places. So just remember, negative one, one, and three were our three x sub i values, x sub zero, x sub one, and x sub two. So first I'm gonna do f of x sub zero. x sub zero is negative one. So I'm gonna substitute in negative one I do negative one cubed plus one. Remember, that's because x cubed plus one is our function. So I'm putting negative one in for x. Simplifying that, I'm getting negative one plus one, which is just zero. Then we're doing the same thing for f of x sub one. So x sub one is one on our interval. So I'm gonna do one cubed plus one. That's one plus one, which is two. Then I do my last point. So my last point that I'm using for the left Riemann sum is three. So I'm doing three cubed plus one. That's 27 plus one, which is 28. Okay, so now I just need to simplify. All of these function values are being multiplied by two. So I'm just gonna factor that two out and do it separately. Okay, so I'm doing two times the quantity zero plus two plus 28. So that's two times 30 which is 60. And that is my left Riemann sum. So that is the approximation of the area under the curve x cubed plus one using left endpoints for our rectangles. Okay, so now we are going to do the right Riemann sum with six rectangles, the R6. 
So here n is equal to 6, that's the number of rectangles, and then the delta x is the width of each rectangle. I'm doing b minus a over n, so 5 minus negative 1 divided by 6, that's 6 divided by 6, which is just 1. This should make sense too, we need to fit 6 rectangles in these intervals, so each one just needs to have a width of 1 in order for that to happen. Now I'm going to label my endpoints, so each of the values I already have is actually an endpoint. So x sub 0, x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, x6. And let's set up the Riemann sum. So the right Riemann sum is the sum from i equals 1 to n of f of x sub i times delta x. And we should expect that we're going to use the right endpoints. So I'm not going to use x sub 0, but I'm going to use the rest of those endpoints. So if we set up the sum correctly, it should be working that way. So I'm going to fill in the parts I know. So I'm taking the sum from i equals 1 up to 6 of f of x sub i. And then I multiply by my delta x, which is 1. So writing out the sum as its parts, I am just multiplying by 1 each time, so I'm not going to write that. And then I go from i equals 1 up to i equals 6. So I have f of x sub 1, f of x sub 2, f of x sub 3, all the way up to f of x 6, and I'm adding these up together. All right, so now I just need to evaluate this sum by finding the function values at each of these points. So I'm going to just fill in the values that go with each of the x sub i's. So I'm really doing f of 0 plus f of 1 plus f of 2 all the way up to f of 5. Now this is a lot of computation, so I'm just going to do them off to the side. So I have a bunch of x values and I'm plugging them in to the f of x, which is x cubed plus 1. So this is the part that can take a little while depending on how many rectangles you have. So I'm going to do 0 for x, I'm getting 1. 1 for x, I'm getting 2. 2 for x, I'm getting 9. 3 for x is 28. 4 for x is 65. And 5 for x is 126. So substituting these things into the sum, I am just adding them all up together. And when I do that, I should get 231. And this is my right Riemann sum. You might notice that this is a lot bigger than the value we got for the left Riemann sum. And we'll look at that a little later. It's also just good to note that when we do more rectangles, we usually get a more accurate approximation of the sum. So we can expect that this is probably closer to the actual sum than the value we got for the left Riemann sum with only three rectangles. Okay, so to wrap up this example, I just need to do the midpoint Riemann sum with two rectangles. So here n is equal to 2, and delta x is b minus a over n, so 5 minus negative 1 over 2. I'm getting 6 over 2, which is 3. This makes sense with the interval we have drawn, since if each of our rectangles has a width of 3, this will make it so that we have two rectangles. I'm going to label my endpoints, so x sub 0 is negative 1, x sub 1 is 2, and x sub 2 is 5. These are the endpoints of my rectangles. And then if you remember, with midpoint Riemann sums, we need to find the midpoint of each of these rectangles to use. So to do that, I'm just going to add up the two endpoints and then divide them by 2. That's just like finding their average, so we're finding the midpoint between them. So here I'm doing 2 plus a negative 1 divided by 2. That's 1 divided by 2. That's just a half. And really, looking at the number line, that should make sense. It's halfway between those two. Then we do the same thing for the second point that we're going to use. So I'm doing 5 plus 2 divided by 2 here. That's 7 over 2. And again, that's 3 and a half, so it makes sense with the way we've drawn our picture. Also, that bar is meant to represent average, or it just helps us know that we're finding a different value from the other ones we had labeled for this midpoint Riemann sum. So the Riemann sum, the definition for the midpoint version, is the sum from i equals 1 to n of f of x sub i bar times delta x. So let's fill in the parts we know. I know that I have n is 2, so I'm taking the sum from i equals 1 to 2 of f of x sub i bar and then I'm multiplying by 3, which is my delta x. So if the sum is written properly, we should just be having two things added together. We're looking at the function at each of those bar points that we found, those midpoints. So when I start for i equals 1, I have f of x sub 1 bar times 3, and then for i equals 2, I have f of x sub 2 bar times 3. 
I'm going to factor that three out since it's in both terms and then fill in the information I found for each of those midpoints. So really I'm doing f of one half plus f of seven halves. Next, I'm trying to find f of one half and f of seven halves. This uses our function, which is x cubed plus one. So I have one half cubed plus one and seven halves cubed plus one. Simplifying this, I'm getting an eighth plus eight over eight, that's one, plus 343 over eight, plus eight over eight. And I can combine these together. I'm getting 360 over eight, which simplifying is 45, all to be multiplied by three. So my final answer is 135 for my midpoint Riemann sum with two rectangles. Okay, so we've technically finished the example. I just wanna look at the graph and make sure our answers make sense with what they were computing. So I've drawn the graph of x cubed plus one here, making the y axis a lot shorter than it normally is, just changing the scale on that so we can see more of the function. And I'm just going to remind us of what the values we found were. Our left Riemann sum with three rectangles was 60, the right Riemann sum with six rectangles was 231, and the midpoint Riemann sum with two rectangles was 135. So starting with the left Riemann sum, I'm gonna draw those rectangles here. So we're using the leftmost function values to draw the rectangles. And I'm seeing here that this is a pretty intensely underestimated Riemann sum. So we're missing a lot of the growth that happens at the end of this interval. So from three to five, a lot of growth happens in the function. And so we're missing a lot of the area there with the left Riemann sum. Then with the right Riemann sum with six intervals, we're using the rightmost function values to find these. And I'm seeing that this is getting a lot more of the area covered, but it's actually overestimating the area. So we're getting extra area that isn't actually under the curve here. Then lastly, with the midpoint Riemann sum, we just had two rectangles, and this is actually an underestimate. I don't think it's super obvious just looking at it if it's an underestimate, but because I was able to find the exact area using some other math techniques that we're going to learn later, I know that this is an underestimate. So this isn't always how it's going to work. It's not always that the left is an underestimate and the right is an overestimate, but on this particular function, that's how it worked. And here the actual value was 162. That's what I found to use to compare. And so we're gonna learn how to do this later using some other techniques. We just need to learn a little more before we're ready to do that. Okay, so that is how to find the Riemann sums when you're given a function. Thank you so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.